Hello there and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 2 of the retrospective. In part 1 we had a look at how we all felt about the space exploration mod in general, what we liked and what we didn't like. And this time we're going to go into some slightly more specific details about the various mods and the interactions between them and updates and things like that. So it's going to be a, a continuation of the last one. So let's get stuck in. And so Metvaris asked, how do we feel about Arendelle's plans for space exploration 0.7 and some of the previews we've seen? It, it looks interesting and it looks like the planet colonising will be... So at the moment it's, it's basically go out, uh, get the resource from that planet and send it back in its processed form. And that's basically it. I think from what I saw, it was there was going to be more to it than that. Like There's things you actually need to do in different places. A bit like uh, Space Age. For the uh, anything we wish was already in, towards the end, an easier way of dialing the Stargate would have been nice. I mean, that, that took about 10 minutes, minutes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. to dial each time. I mean, I'm, I'm personally, I'm quite excited about the changes in that teaser. What, what I found really interesting is, you remember we were talking a little bit about the you know, tiny, teeny, tiny variation in stars, and now there are going to yes. be three different types of star. It's like, oh, that's okay. awesome. I don't remember seeing that's, that. Yeah, that, that sounded good. Yeah, I think one of the big things I'm finding most interesting, or I think has the most most potential is just things being a little bit more varied because at the moment there's that i feel like a lot of the planets feel very very similar they're not okay they're not actually similar you have volcanic -y looking ones that just have, have red themes and no water you have some have more cliffs than others and so on but there's not that much difference between the different planets really and i think with the space with the changes that have been made for space age i think Arendelle is going to be able to tie into that in, to a huge extent yeah. mm -hmm. and and that's going to allow much much more variety in the in the um, in the actual planets we're going to see and i think that's I think that's going to be very very interesting yeah i think the the final version of space exploration will feel like an uh, like an expansion pack for space age so yeah. um, in Space Age, you, are, you have five different planets with real unique abilities, and you will just expand that functionality for Space Exploration 1.0 or yes, I think, I 0 0.7 or whatever. Yeah, I think yeah. so. As Sophia says, making science packs on other planets, just being able to do the whole sort of chain of whatever with the science is, does sound quite interesting. I, mean, I suppose there's no reason you couldn't do that in, um, in Space Exploration as is. Uh, just thinking of all the resources that go into it, though, you, you'd probably be shipping an awful lot of stuff out to the planets. And, and, and also because you need all of the, the special metals in such quantities over back on Norvis as well, it feels like that shipping all those things in is probably a, a, a good idea. Uh, sh sorry, shipping them in as the metal ingots stage is, 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 is the right idea. Frugal says that space exploration has too many different buildings uh, compared to the five in base Factorio. That's an interesting point, and I... It feels like it makes sense to have different buildings doing different things, but also on the flip side, it's quite nice. It's it's quite nice if all of the if the designs are don't don't require you to carry a million different things around with you. I've certainly noticed um, later on in, in in some of the, some of these sort of some of these sort of games, your inventory space starts to feel a bit cramped because you're trying to carry so many different types of things around with you. Like in this game, for example, there's um, space belts as well as ground belts, there's space pipes as well as ground pipes. There's scaffolding as well as landfill and there's so many different and, and as you say various different types of assembly machines as well or things that are effectively assembly machines so yeah i, I can sort of see your point i'm i'm not sure how i'm not sure whether i entirely agree with it but uh, yeah i think that's um fair that that ties quite neatly into one of the other questions which was uh are you, is it void music's one what are our thoughts yes about here we go see and space age being convergent in many ways yes and will that mean that um, space exploration will be a less unique experience and i think my my feelings on that were that whilst space age it feels like space age is sort of treading the ground that space explorations are already done to an extent i think that the sheer scale of space exploration is going to keep it feeling suitably different so rather than um, so, so whilst yeah space age may, may be, um, go out to five different planets space exploration is going to be go out to ten different planets and there'll be, a bit, there'll be more variety more weirdness and more complicated things to do on each one so I think there's yeah I think there's going to be um, certainly a I, I don't think it's a problem that they're going to be doing similar sort of things and so I think yeah, maybe it would maybe it'll be um, like comparing angel bobs to vanilla at the moment in that they're yes they're technically both try and build up until you can launch a rocket but one of them is so much more in-depth and detailed than the other but as I said but as I was saying earlier 
when I was comparing them. Hopefully it's still going to be more of a, here is, you play some Factorio, and then, oh, by the way, there's some extra stuff to do afterwards to keep, to keep things interesting. Uh, to keep you going, rather, um, yeah, after the normal endgame. But we, we'll have to wait and see what happens, what it's like when it comes out. But I, I'm expecting it to be, sort of, I'm expecting the two of them to be suitably different, that it won't just feel like uh, one's a sort of a, a slightly bigger version of the other. And as you, as you said before, uh, 0.5, space exploration, felt like Factorio, but continued. Yes. And so space exploration 0.7, feeling like Factorio space age, but continued, is still a good thing. It doesn't have to be massively different. No, that's, that's a good point. And we all play Factorio and the mods that come from, with it because we like playing Factorio. So having mods that are just more of the, even if they're more of the same, but with a bit more advanced, but, but different enough to be interesting, that's still a good thing. If yeah. you enjoy it, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exa yeah, exactly. If you like it, then more of it is, is good. Um, yeah, and I, I, I do like the idea that Space Age and Space Exploration 1 is is basically the other, but with a heck of a lot more detail. Because that, that there are, I'm trying to think of a good example, but I, I know that in the past I have played games, I can't remember which one, though, where you effectively you've got a toggle on it, and one is you have control of all of the individual details, uh, which can be really quite overwhelming, and you've really got to sit down and concentrate. But there's also a version where you just sort effectively delegate that to the computer and say, oh, I want it to achieve this and it will go and do the details for you. Yeah, the Mountain Blade you... games do that, I think, to an extent with combat. You can, you, can, you you go out, you find another army to fight, and you can either go in and sort of control, run through the battle and take part in it yourself. And I think there's a bit of a bonus if you do that, because you are significantly more effective than the computer is. But if you've got an absolutely overwhelming force and you don't care, you can just click automatically automatically solve the battle, and it'll go yeah, you, just, oh, yeah, yeah. you lose ten soldiers or whatever. Yeah, Total War does that as well. So I, was, I was thinking, I, I genuinely I can't remember the game, it might be in a submarine simulation one, where, you know, just saying, oh, just take me down to such such depth, and the computer will just do it. As opposed to, okay, I need to rotate all of the dive planes and I need to adjust ballast and I need to do this, that and the other and the submarine moves based on what you've done. Yeah, I feel what you need there is, yes, you, you, need, you should be like, actually Kerbal Space Program does it quite well. In the early on, it makes you do all those sort of things completely manually. But then as you build up tech levels, it, it then allows you to automate to an extent some of the things that you've been doing manually to make them a bit easier, to just because you've you've already demonstrated that you can do them, so why not just have, why not uh, remove the remove just having to do that particular thing again? And that that, that works quite well, I think. Um, yes, I, I think interestingly the other way around. Having read the uh, Friday Factory of Facts, where whichever planet it was, the the biological one, the, the plant life one, they, they dialed it right back from something like twelve separate plants to three or whatever it was. Because hmm. uh, Arendelle's initial thing was you know, <laughs> very very it's hugely. Whereas if you look at it, Arendelle's now saying, okay, yeah, we're going to say we're, we'll only have three tech cards per catalogue rather than four. We're going to have smaller cargo rockets and, and cheaper as well, just to balance that out. We're going to change the science packs down so that they're on planets rather than having to bring absolutely everything to a central hub. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. simplifying and diversifying. Which I really like. Rather, yeah, rather than doing more or less the same thing an extra time, you have a, you have a, a variation on it. So, and I guess to an extent, that's that's what the um, the, the four different t uh, colors of, of space science are supposed to be. They're all going. You, you go in and you do completely different things. And so, having yeah, having more of that sort of thing makes a lot of sense. And I mean, we we all did one of the. I'm calling it tier three sort of resource science packs because uh, you've got the yeah the basics and then you've got Cryonite, Vulcanite, tier 2 and then the, you know, you, you know what I mean. We all did one of those and you've got four tech cards, each one of which required a bunch of things to make each catalogue. So you've got 16 different builds and I know that for material science, by the end I was just going copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy <laughs> yeah. paste, then sit in the menus and just you know, change one and then click and just yeah, drag sure. the recipe over. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. You, um, to be fair, you did overbuild that area a bit, but also on the flip side, <laughs> I, I, I agree that only on the Astro as well, once you've done one of the telescope recipes, the next one is basically the same, just potentially with a different type of telescope. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of... The, the, yes, it's, it's repetition for the sake of repetition rather than because you're doing something new and interesting. And they do get harder, but only because yeah. the telescopes get less powerful and they produce things less, less quickly. Um, the run ones through. all me mechanical facilities, or the majority. A lot of so those. I think, yeah. I think that's a difference with 
material is lots of mechanical stuff, whereas you've got a bunch of different telescopes for astro. Think, uh, energy used a, a bunch of different machines. Biological is all over the place. Right, so maybe material is a little bit more repetitive. Yeah, okay, fair it, 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 In that case, it's possible I just got the, the two really unfortunate bits, where, or the, the really unfortunate chain of iridium through material science. <laughs> yeah, which you'll, is, you'll have to yeah. wait well, wait about six months and then play SE uh, on, on your yeah. own. Or maybe play SE 0.7 when it comes out. Hey, I'll do a bit. Frugal says that space age is supposed to be about 60 hours, space exploration more like 600, so it's a sort of a, an order of magnitude there. <laughs> I think one of the questions uh, was from uh, Topaz Viper, uh, was the first playthrough more fun? Yeah, the, the first time through was, it was a lot more unknown, that there was a lot more having to work things out as I went along. I don't, th I wouldn't say the, the second playthrough suffered too much from that, because there was quite a lot of changes made, and sometimes doing things, even if they're a little bit familiar, is still sort of quite nice. But yeah, I think, I think to an extent, yes, it was definitely... Having play, playing it when it was completely new and different and fresh was was probably more interesting. Now, that having having seen how much 0.7 seems to be different, how different it seems to be, I think it's going to be a bit more. I, th I think 0.7 is going to be more of a more of a change from 0.6 than 0.6 was from 0.5. So I think we'll still have some of the variety in there. Um, but yeah, an excellent question. It, it's, it seems like something. It, it, I feel like it was definitely more interesting when there was when it, when it was newer. But then that's that's always going to be the case. I think. Yeah, for me personally, um, I think it was different fun because the, the whole uh, mod pack was different enough or had different aspects that I didn't got into at all at my first playthrough. For example, I did a rocket-based only system and no spaceships at all in my uh, 0 0.5 playthrough. So it had enough challenges to challenge me to, to be interesting and um, mm. yeah, to have fun with you guys. I, I wouldn't say the first one was more fun, but different fun. Yeah, and we, we tried as much as possible to, to try and do things either differently or do things that we hadn't done before. So, for example, that's, yep. why, that's why Mike did the Arcosphere build, because he hadn't done Arcospheres before, and we thought it'd be fun to make him suffer. Uh, it's, why we, <laughs> it's why we didn't play with LTN. It's why we yep. tried things like rushing spaceships and not doing, not doing cargo rockets, all those sorts of things. The idea was that we would do things a bit differently, and so that would, that would hopefully make things a bit more interesting a bit, and, 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 and mix things up a little bit from the way, from the way we'd done it in the previous runs. Faustus says his favourite runs are no train and core miner only playthroughs. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> you do you. <laughs> um, to be honest, we, we started off with that as a, as a sort of the plan. Um, which of course lasts until first contact with the enemy as they do, uh, well at least the core miner only parts, we would go out to uh, the Vulcanite planet or wherever and start trying to build everything just, fr just from the core fragments. Uh, but we then found that even if you completely cover the planet in core mining drills or c take every, every patch you, that, that's available, for the, because there's four of us playing, our demands were quite high. We were ripping through the science a bit faster than you would if you're playing on your own. And so just just using the core patches wasn't enough. I was sort of hoping that it would be, and that's why I came that's why I think I think the original del making delivery cannons out of the core fragments was my idea. And then Mark produced the nice design that does so. But it was based on an, on an on a suggestion I made. Uh, and my hope was that we'd be able to yeah, literally just have everything every planet completely self-sufficient based on just just what comes out of the core fragments. It didn't work for a couple of different reasons. Part, um, one being that we didn't get enough of some of the things we needed. Another being that um, we, we couldn't get enough of the resources just out of core fragments. But it was a nice idea. Uh, but yeah, un unfortunately with, with four players, just just digging up core fragments didn't really work for us. But there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough throughput essentially. Uh, Sophia asks, what does the combination of K2 and SE bring? Above, uh, above and beyond just playing one of them. What make what's made better and what's made worse by the combination of the two? So my answer to this was it's, it, it's a little bit hard to tell because I haven't actually played 0.6 on its own. Um, however, uh, my gut feeling based on that is that a lot of the infrastructure systems you build, especially the more advanced ones, uh, require a few extra steps, specifically because of the IMA site in order to make them. Uh, and also the, having the extra science packs, the, the matter ones and the advanced ones, also add in as quite a bit more demand as well. That said, in, in, to offset that, K2 offers you a lot of extra more powerful buildings, which are really quite nice. They make a lot of things quite a lot easier, or at least they make building out larger constructions even much easier because you've got the advanced uh, uh, chemical plants and the advanced assembly machines, which run at about 10 times the speed of the normal ones. That also makes your module use a lot more efficient because you can uh, put productivity modules in, or you need fewer productivity modules to bring your entire 
system up to running at a higher speed. I think given the given that we're doing a multiplayer run with four people, I think that extra complexity was absolutely fine. We had pe extra people to sort of that, that meant so we we the extra complexity got split up between us. For a single player run, I think I can see a very strong argument for uh, sticking with just one or the other, um, rather because unless you really want an absolutely enormous playthrough, because I think you might start to drown a little bit in all the complications. If you want an 800 hour game, then sure, go for, go for it, go, go for both of them. But if you'd like to keep it to a mere sort of five or 600, then perhaps going with just space exploration would be slightly better. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the joke we made early on, so the Mocking Lawrence joke, was saying, Mark, Tristan and I have agreed to play Factory together. We felt that, you know, space exploration was too easy with just the three of us, so we'll add K2 and SE on. That's oh, still too easy, so we'll add Lawrence and to bring it down to about, you know, the level for us. <laughs> Very droll. Hey. <laughs> but more, more, yeah, more, more seriously, having four players does really divide that out because the, the reason that I abandoned the SE works is basically I'm burning out because I was it's, it's a stupid idea. But anyway, it's a lot a lot of the same, and that's why people abandon long running games unless they are quite heavily content driven. Yeah, one of the things I've noticed when back when I was playing um, Angel Bobs before I started, or possibly even SpaceX, certainly before I started streaming when I was just making videos. I would get to a point where I'd look at the next recipe of the thing I, what I had to do next, and I'd just go, oh, I can't be bothered to deal with this right now, and I'd stop playing for a little while. And then, a bit later, I'd come back to it and carry on playing, because I, I had videos to make and stuff like that. So, it, well, I wasn't giving up, but I was getting to the point where I was going, oh, that's quite enough of that, I want to do something else now. Whereas, what, now that I've started streaming, I'm, I'm more or less dedicated to saying, I've, I've said I will play for the next four hours, or the next five hours, depending on how engrossed I get. So at that point, I can't I can't do that, and so I'm much more likely to just carry on playing, even though I, uh, even if I've got to a sort of a, a frustration quit point, should we say? Uh, so I think that that's one of the areas that streaming is quite good for me. Um, but I can totally yeah I can totally see why you, if you're playing, especially if you're playing on your own, you go oh I've got to go out and set up another metal processing facility. I've already done that twice. So I guess well off, off we go then. Uh, I can I can see why you get a bit frustrated with that. Bellinor says yeah his his uh, SEK2 run turned turned into a single player one because the other two people players playing with uh, felt overwhelmed and dropped out. So he doesn't work on it very often either. Yeah um, uh, yeah that's a good point. Yeah the multiplayer and the streaming I think both work to sort of, to drag you together because yeah as you say it's like having a week, weekly a weekly uh, agreed session we know we're going to be playing at this time so we turn up and we will play it we're not we, we I'm not gonna say we can't so can't cop out of it because obviously we could we could say oh no no I've had enough I'm not, I'm not gonna play like Balanor's friends did but to an extent it's, it's a bit like my workouts I've now that I've got a workout buddy I'm doing I'm, I'm doing a lot more workouts than I was beforehand because I don't procrastinate because there's someone turning up saying right let's go let's go let's do some lifting it it works much better that way and I think that that uh, that applies to um, to playing games where you can get a little bit frustrated should we say K2 did add a whole load of combat stuff weapons and things oh uh, yes yeah, so that's what yeah. unbalanced oh, a bit yeah it made combat a lot easier but also I don't particularly care about combat so yeah agreed. That is fine it, it also added filters which I always find like a, 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 that's a in my mind, a really weird oh, balancing yeah. decision. Because, yeah, remember filters? Yeah. <laughs> back, before, <laughs> back before we just so annihilated. The comes to mind. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> then we annihilated all the biters and whatever. Oh, air filters. Yeah. Yes, that took me a while to work out what you were talking about. Oh, sorry, it's it's air, so long. Air, air fuel. Sorry, it's air, air filters. Yeah. Um, so you can just remove the pollution, so the biters are pretty minimalistic in in their threat level. Although, yeah, um, it, it stops them attacking, but it doesn't stop them evolving, which is quite interesting. True. Which is, that was an interesting discovery in terms of how the game works, which yes. does make sense. Um, but yeah, it, it was an interesting point there. Yeah, but, that's, um, that's, that's a fair point. That's another, that is another big change. I've forgotten about that one. Another yeah. one is power options. K2 had a, a whole bunch more different power options. Is the processed fuel a K2 thing as well? No, no, that that's... Okay. that's okay. Sure. See, this is the problem. I, I, I sometimes, I, I, I sometimes <coughs> don't know. Yeah, that's my main comment, basically. I... I don't know what changes were due to 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, mm. uh, what was due to K2. So it was so well integrated, both mod packs, that you don't really, maybe from apart from some optical changes in the, or differences in the machines, you know, from two different, slightly different art styles, but otherwise it's not really a noticeable difference. Distinguishable border between the two mod packs, they just integrated very well. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah in yeah. my um, solo run, I got really confused because I was like, oh, where's all Creep gone? Yeah, that's from K2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember it from 0.5, but... Um, K2 added in being able to use, tell inserters to drop on the near side of the belt, apparently. Oh, yes, that, oh, yeah. that's really, really useful, but it also yeah. has loaders. 
And it, K2 seems to give a lot of, there's two ways you can achieve this. You can either slap and surface down and just have an alternating near fire, or you can use a loader, which given the rate that some of these machines are going through, it's going to do both sides of the belt. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Brad, Brad, Brad Jack is, is happy that the integration looks is looking seamless because I think, you, yes, you're quite involved with that. Did you, did you, it, I forget exactly what your involvement level was, but I remember you mentioning it. So, uh, so yes, well done. You did, did a good yep. job. <laughs> oh, okay. Apparently Space Exploration has um, loaders from 0.6-ish on so Peter says that uh, we, we would still have loaders even with that, even with only space exploration. What did we think about the mod update and how did it influence things? Mm -hmm. So I think I, I have a different opinion to certain other people. I okay. I don't I didn't have a problem with it. I don't think we thought through the patch notes well enough, but I think it was entirely user error and the patch notes were clear about all the things that had changed and if we'd sat down and actually thought thought it through we would have, would have made a list of here's the things we need to go and check on after the update and we'd have dealt with them and it would have been fine but we dealt with most of them <laughs> but we ignored ones where it was things like chlorine is now going to be produced slower and went oh well that's just a bit slower it'll be fine and then suddenly everything yeah, suddenly uses chlorine <laughs> is yeah. Uh, yeah it's still working it's just producing at one percent of the speed we wanted it to yeah i think it wasn't really a big issue for us i think it were a few quick recipe changes i mean with uh, four people playing it and having a rough idea what the major changes are to do that within one stream that was quite manageable of course we we missed like i don't know five or ten percent and uh, i remember noticing the changes in the vita processing from mike or novice uh, yeah. like like half <laughs> a year later or something or <laughs> yes. a year later uh, <laughs> but uh, other than that i think that went quite well and basically unnoticeable or without many hiccups i i mostly agree some of the things like like the chlorine production because it's done in so many different areas it was very very easy to miss one and then to yeah. come back to it a bit later and go oh so that's why that's broken well, i remember the one in 0.5 where it changed the recipe for i think it was at small electric motors and i had oh, yeah. an arbitrary large number of those systems all running on norvis in that in that game uh mm. and I kept, and for ages afterwards, I was finding new places where where that had just failed because of, because of the recipe change. So I think it's a little bit annoying. That said, I do think the changes were all for the better. However, I'm not a hundred percent sure that that changing the mid run was was always the right thing to do. I think, in a way, I suppose because we've got the, I think it probably made good content in that we we're coming through and we we're fixing things that were a bit broken and sorting that sort of thing out. Um, but I'm not sure whether it was. I don't know. I. It's... I mean, my my view on it sort of fits you know, dovetails nicely with that, which is at the you know, episode two, you know, stream two. Yeah, sure, change it. Doesn't matter. There is nothing we've done that we can't fix. When we're you know we're thinking we're a couple of weeks off, ending it after you know at that point, a year and three quarters. Ugh. You know, it, it, it's probably where... about a year in. Uh, for um, the update time. The, the the big one was yeah, it's about a year in. Oh, I, the, the the point I'm going with is that it's sort of uh, the earlier you are, yeah, sure, the, the less it matters. The later you are, the more it matters. Yes, so like because you've got so much more that's going to be potentially exactly. changing. <clears throat> and you suddenly find that you've got one thing somewhere that you've almost forgotten about because it's been a year since you built it. Yeah. And On the other hand, bit, you've got the when, when, with the re the really big changes like the advanced science packs. Those were completely changed. And so that was sort of okay because we just rebuilt it completely from scratch, and so it didn't it didn't affect us all that much. Or I, I say we didn't. It was as if we just did one extra an extra science pack later on. Um, we could then and then we could demolish the old one eventually. So those I think those were not not a problem because they didn't they did they, they weren't scattered around the base. It was just we went okay. Well, this this factory no longer works. We need to make a new one, and that was fine. But some yeah something like the chlorine ratios changing was just a bit was a bit awkward. I think so. It was, I think I think upgrading was the right thing to do, especially because with this being a sort of a street, with this being streaming and for people's entertainment, people are going to ask why aren't you on the latest version quite a lot, and they're going and and also they not to put too fine a point on it. I think sometimes people enjoy seeing us suffer, so <laughs> so going in and, yeah. um, and 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 de and deliberately doing something that is going to cause some problems, so that we can then go in and fix those problems. I think makes quite good content, and so for that reason, I think it was the right thing to do as well. Um, but I think having having something fairly early on in a production chain change is significantly worse than having even significantly more major changes to a final product. <clears throat> yes, Sophia yeah. appreciates the suffering. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> Dr. Chris Kelvin <laughs> asked whether we think any of the recipes are too hard, e.g. Vitamelange. Um, yeah, my answer is quite 
short no <laughs> <laughs> fair enough good uh, no, no. I think, um i think as i said earlier the the learning curve is quite nice and uh, progresses quite good so i think mike you can chime in here uh, even for newer players for something like iridium um it's it's hard and it's a challenge but it's something you can do even as a not that experienced factorio player right yeah i, I wouldn't describe anything in factorio as truly hard once you understand the basic mechanics it's oh circuits that's the other one six mechanics once you understand the six basic mechanics, I'm, I'm always so nobody expects the Mike Inquisition. <coughs> um, yeah, well, once you know those, even Iridium, it's I'd say it's fiddly rather than hard. Mm. Um, it's it's very difficult to come up with a design that just quite simply will not work as long as you've actually got everything plugged in. You might get a lot of annoying deadlocks. You might get weird, wonderful problems. But as soon as you understand the concept of the priority input splitter, you, you're in a good place. You, you're just about efficiency after that. I don't think any. Of the, I agree with Mark. I don't think any of the recipes are, are too hard per se. I think some are too fiddly. I put down that, that a lot of the challenges or the difficulty tends to come from either the throughput required or the power used, and they're not really challenges. They're just sort of do more oh, well, of that. I need more solar panels then. Yeah. Or yeah. oh, I need to just copy this entire chunk and paste it over here. At least you can copy paste, unlike in a certain other game I'm playing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if if, if it's building big is then the thing. Then we could talk about space scaffolding requirements for power generation for dimensional anchors, which oh, just gets yeah. silly. Yeah, uh, and I get that's meant to be a late game thing, but it was, it, well, you, I agree, it was. It did get a bit silly. <laughs> yeah, it's I think, just, oh. I, I, mean, it, out, it, I think I worked out that each, each dimensional anchor we placed required more space scaffolding than the entire rest of the factory put together. And that was for each one of them. Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, I think I would I would agree with what they're saying. I, th I think there's of the of the normal Factorio s stuff, and in that I'm going to sort of exclude Arcospheres as being a bit different from general Factorio things, and also ex exclude the uh, Fenestra puzzle because that's completely different from normal Factorio things. But yeah, none of it, it none of it is, is is hard as such, and it's all you look at the recipe. It needs these inputs. It gives you those outputs. You need to deal with all of that. Yes, throughput can be a challenge. Getting enough belts in there can be a challenge. But there's nothing in there that's unreasonably hard. I don't think so. Yeah, I I, I, I agree with the um, the opinions of the other two there. The um, the iridium did did appear to be quite a challenge early on because it's quite a complicated recipe. And I think the the Vita Melange was sort of an ongoing challenge in that it kept need we kept needing more and more and more of it. But needing more and more and more of something just means you need to expand the production. It's not the it's not exactly it's it's a sort of hard, but it's not actually it's not that hard. I think it's probably the best way to look at it. It's not it's not certainly yeah. not too hard. It's just sometimes I mean, it's crazy throughput. In in fairness, a, a large proportion of the reason why Iridium went on and on and on was because that all of the logistics and infrastructure needed to be built up to make it work. And so the first couple of streams on Kothar, I didn't actually touch Iridium. It was all about, I mean, I, I, at the so time, clearing we were biters, wasn't it? there's clearing biters, but there's also, we were um, trying desperately to avoid rocket usage. And so I built a mini mall on Kothar, which would build a bit of everything that I needed. Yeah, uh, that was the... a really stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're not wrong. Which one? Hindsight, <laughs> with, with hindsight, I would not do that again. I, I would just send more rockets and call it good. I was just really embracing the fewer <laughs> rockets, make it wholly self-sufficient. Yeah, I should say the the uh, the attempting to minimise rocket use was not sending raw materials around by rocket. I was I was okay with using rockets to send out the supplies of whatever was needed in order to build up a production system. Yeah, I know. I, I was just really embracing that. But that yeah, that's that's fair. I'm not not going to object to that. And yeah, so that that slowed the whole thing right down. That said, later on when it's like, oh, I need one more red belt. I've made it on site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely got red belt production going on quite a few of my planets. Certainly on Talos because I, it, yeah, they're easy. They're just iron in about four different ways, so that's not that's not a yeah. problem. Yeah, and I, I only went up to that level. I didn't. It was a mini mall. It, it was really not that serious of a, a thing, but it was very much there to. Um, yeah, it, it was it was there to make it so that I just if I needed one more machine, I got it, yeah. regardless of what it was. Um, or if I suddenly decided to slap down some phenomenal expansion or whatever, again it could be done. 
And so the next question we're going to take a look at is from Negator UK, who said that um, apparently the uh, the space exploration devs and community they used to be a bit sort of secretive about the about the Fenestra victory and how and how to solve it and all that sort of stuff. And this is a question about whether we've received any any pushback from from the community about whether it's about um, us basically going in and showing our working and talking about what we've worked out and so on. And it occurred to me that firstly, I suspect if anyone was going to receive any sort of comments or abuse about it, it would probably be me because I am. Very very much the face of the group, and so I'm the person I would expect people to contact if they if they had had commentary on stuff like that. And I've not heard anything. Nobody has said anything about uh, hey, why are you spoiling this puzzle? Don't do that. You're 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 ruining the fun for everyone. And it occurred to me as I was thinking about that a little bit. That there are def there's definitely two different ways to look at spoilers on this. The first one is. Are you ruining the fun for people by telling them how how the things work and uh, and therefore and therefore meaning they 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 they, they have that they, they, it's spoiled for them and they and they miss out on what they were what they would have um, otherwise seen and I think I've been quite careful for all the videos there is a warning early on saying in this video we're going to be talking about the Fenestra puzzle if you if you are trying to avoid spoilers you don't want to watch it because well it'll spoil it um, and so I think that helps a lot on that side the other part of it is well if they, if they're trying to keep it secret to force people to solve it. If they, um, if it, uh, one way or another, uh, to force people to come up with their own solutions to it, rather than going going off and finding some other guy who's done it on the internet, who's done it, made a video about it, and, and just spo and, and told people how to do the thing. And I've not, so yeah, that that is sort of a, a valid concern, I guess. But I think there's the, it, like like many of the things in this game, it, it a lot a lot of it is going to be about giving you an idea of how things are done, rather than necessarily giving away all of the information. But I think, uh, like the arc how to do, how to uh, how to do run arcospheres, for example, is its own sort of puzzle, and yet the, uh, it's fine to sort of tell people a bit a bit about how this sort of thing works. So I think maybe that's maybe that's part of it because I've been quite careful to not spoil people who don't want to be spoiled. There's not there's, there, there, yeah anyway there hasn't been any pushback from it. I've not had I've not had any comments positive or negative about it actually. I didn't realise it was a, it was a little bit hush hush until uh, until the gators comment and uh, about it. No, I think um, the. The feedback was more or less positive, right? To have someone to stick with uh, SE and uh, even with the uh, hidden exit as well, the hidden finish. Yes, definitely. I mean, I feel like part of the reason that my videos and streams have done so well, um, other than my bubbling personality, of course, <coughs> um, <laughs> is because there aren't, basically there aren't, I don't think there's anybody else streaming endgame space exploration. Most people yeah. will get, well, they'll, they'll start playing it, they'll get 100 hours in, they'll get 150 hours in, they'll go, oh my god, how long does this mod pack go on for? I'm going to go and play something else. Whereas, we're a bit more tenacious around here, so we've been we've been playing to, we've been playing to actually go in and uh, dis we decided we wanted to actually complete this run having started it and we in fact we've done that with basically all the all the games we played I, I, my, my attitude towards factorio is I consider it consider it complete when you've done all of the non-infinite researches for a thing and now okay I've tweaked the rules a little bit to say semi-infinite researches like for example this artillery shell range is technically not an infinite research because we don't have an infinity on there yet but it is just doing more and more and more bigger and bigger and bigger ones and uh, all the same sort of thing with more and more science packs so I would count this as finished the only ones we haven't done so far, um, actually the only one we haven't done so far is this Crastorio 2 logo. All the rest of them are infinite or semi-infinite, so I think they don't count. Sophia brings up the suggested point that they have to have to find all the places that, and, and make the triangle things themselves. Yes, yes they do. Um, but I think there's a big difference between having to sort of to go through the steps if you've been told what the steps are and having to do the having to solve and come up with the solution in the first place. It's like it's, it's like being given I don't know the quadratic formula to solve a to solve a quadratic equation. It's relatively easy to plug the numbers into it. However, if you don't know that that equation exists, then it's going to be a lot harder to find the solutions to it. But yes, exa exactly. As, as Mike says, the, uh, working out the basics of the puzzle is, def is definitely a challenge. Uh, I mean, we came up with a theory relatively quickly that turned out to be basically correct, and then from there it was trying to turn that theory into a thing we could actually use. And that was that was that was definitely the harder part, I think. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was certainly a, it was it was certainly a challenge, and, um, and one that we were reasonably able to uh, just, just to solve. I say we, it was mostly others, but we'll get on to uh, we'll get on to that a bit later on when there's a, a, a big section that's all, all about the Fenestra puzzle. 
And so, thank you very much for watching. That Fenestra puzzle discussion will come in uh, probably at least a couple of episodes time, and, I'll put, and don't worry, I'll cover it in spoiler warnings in case you are still planning to do this puzzle yourself. In the next one, let's take a look at how we found each other, how we thought playing with each other went, and um, I'm sure we won't be too rude about each other. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. So, join me next time for that. Come along on Mondays, where I've returned now to playing XCOM 2, so things are going quite well there, battling a different type of aliens. These ones have guns, unlike the biters, they only have spitters, which is much easier to deal with. And then on Wednesdays, we're still doing the Jen's First Factory stream, where one of my friends is being introduced to Factorio for the very first time. As, as of recording this, she's discovered biters and she's got blue science being made, but there's plenty left to go. So, come along and join for those streams, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.